this morning we're walking along Glinders Way, a national trail no one talks about very much. Normally it's all about Offers Dyke or somewhere else, but it's quite a long one. I'm not sure how long it is. I think it starts in Knighton. I'm not sure of the exact start point. I've joined it near Garth Hill. And the man himself I was reading a few days ago, Owain Glindur, if that's how you say it, he was the, I think he was a self-proclaimed Prince of Wales back in his day. The most staggering fact I can remember is that even in Welsh-speaking schools where it's taught as a first language, students were not taught about this man. They were taught English history like I learned at school, which I've also forgotten. I found that quite staggering because if I was a Welsh student and later in my adult life I learned that I was deprived of this education of this man, I'd be quite shocked by that, quite, quite angry in fact. Following this trail for probably six or seven miles at most, then I head across some brighter ways and across some roads and look to rejoin Offer's Dyke Path, this time going north back towards the campsite. Another cloudy overcast day with highs apparently of 18 degrees later on. Yesterday I walked along pretty much all of this following Offer's Dyke Path. The way has been quite roady so far. Nice quiet roads, but it could just be this local area, I don't know. Wow, that's quite a long climb. It's just starting to level out now, I think. Whew. We're traveling further away from yesterday's Offers Dyke route. Here's the way ahead. I mean, we've got some big hills in the distance over there. I'm pretty sure the dark one is going to be rad in the forest, if you can just see it. Today's walk could be as long as 17.5 miles if I stick to my original plan. My biggest concern today is the extra weight I'm carrying. So at the campsite, things are quite... We've got one toilet, one shower, one sink in this small stone building to serve all um, people staying at the campsite. I'm finding the toilet situation quite difficult sometimes. Like this morning I went in quite early. You know, somebody in the showers, I thought, okay, I won't sit down just yet. Uh, came up later after breakfast and there was somebody else in the toilet now, so I had to wait again. But I, I thought, you know, time's ticking on. I wasn't gonna leave my walk 15 minutes ago. Maybe I'll just carry on and see how it goes. So here I am today with extra extra energy to burn hopefully. <laughs> Is that how it works in biology? I've also fueled myself with a 500 calorie fire pot breakfast. It was the toasted banana porridge. I'm not too happy with that one really. It tasted quite watery. There was, I had to try and save it with some honey and extra stirring and yeah, I'm not a huge fan of it. I'm sure it's good for the energy values and that sort of thing. If you're doing a really long day's walking on a backpacking trail or something. You get your money's worth, certainly, but I might try something else next time. And at some point in the near future, I'm going to invest in a, a lightweight trowel for wild camping trips. I'm really going to try and get down to Dartmoor this summer, even next month sometime. This must be Downs's Dingle. And the route climbs up again slightly up that track, and somewhere around that hill should be a trick point. My thing is on private land again. This must be a sheep shearing area. It's a sad fact these days that wool has such little value they end up burning it. That trick point I mentioned is right up there if you can see it. I'm not going to bother going up there though, it's all private land and it's quite, quite a long way up to be fair. And the other issue is long grass, once again. Where are so far today? I'm wearing my trousers outside my socks. I want to try and maintain that if I can. And the grass here is slightly longer. My toes are a little bit damp. 
on the boots anyway. But I'm going to persevere for now. I've seen a lot worse in the last few days. Following the way down towards Tankin Vo, and when I get down there, I'll leave this way for today, cross the main road, and make uh, well begin my journey over towards Offers Dyke. Without wishing to speak too soon, the way from here looks very obvious. Just down, where is it? Down along the along the valley or above the valley. Just pass through a few farmyards. Way market is really good though, so it's easy to find your way. No issues there. Making good progress as well. I'm over, well, about two hours into the walk and getting near to the B road where I'm gonna leave the trail. But also, the sun's now shining through, so at some point I've got to stop and take this second layer off and put the dreaded sun cream on. They say that history repeats itself now and again. I had another frustrating morning in the search for hidden footpaths. Some with no access on the roadside, some with just no markings or way markings. I tried following the first bridal way for a distance, but then came to a dead end at one field. Next one, couldn't find a way through the hedge from the road. After that I sort of gave up, plodded on down the B road, got to the A road, followed it down this far, crossing the River Lug. Now I'm finally heading up the right path towards Forest Wood. And there you go. This is part of Radnor Forest. I missed out on some hills over here, but I'm not too fussed about that. So maybe in England we're just really fortunate with the way marking we have yellow, blue, red, purple arrows all over the place going to and from the main roads. But here in Wales it's really hard to find those. I wish you could smell this stuff. I think it's just the pine, maybe a sea there or something. It smells amazing. There's something very refreshing about walking through the woods, isn't there? Especially a large, large area like this. It's just being beneath the leaves, all the green, the bird song, the smells, the scents. I love being on open hilltops and mountains and that, but the occasional woodman break. It's just really good for you. I don't know why, but it just is. And a quick quiz for you, a few moments. What does this sign mean? The answer is open access land. You have a right to roam anywhere within the boundaries beyond. And look at this. Finger posts. I think it's also fair to guesstimate that that bridge line over there is going to be the way back to the campsite. Pretty much following off this dike path. Again, looking back towards a 
pretty sure that's the main ride in the forest over there. It still looks quite misty in the cloud. Walked up through forest wood over there. I think that's May Hill actually in Herefordshire. Oh God, it's a show wherever it is. When I went to one Thursday, straight ahead. I can just see those trees on top. And somewhere down there would be the Hargest Ridge, which I'm aiming for tomorrow on the way home. As I was saying, I've got to follow off this dike next and get on that. Yeah, first of all, it's time for lunch. So this morning I followed Glinda's way all the way down to Fangidlo. I tried following this bridal way here, but that came to a dead end, so I turned back, came down the road a bit further, the B road. Um, couldn't find a footpath going through here. So I came down the road even further, all the way down to join the, the A road I drove down on uh, Friday, going towards Yalan Valley. And I walked down here, crossed back over the River Lug, then turned off down here, up through the woods. And now I'm here at the trigger point on Clan Vaur, at 387 metres. My way forward, going back towards the campsite, means heading down Lytton Hill. Now I'm going down this way. Anyway, I'm going down here somewhere, and I'll join this here at Offers Dyke Path from Furrow Hill all the way along here back into Knighton and the campsite you can see just there. So a pretty long way to go, that's probably, I don't know, five miles plus the bit to get to the office dike. Well, physically speaking, that was hard work. I came down from the trick points uh, through a basically a bracken and fern forest, probably filled with ticks. There was no clear path despite the signs saying footpath this way. I forced my way through, uh, navigated to the edge of the wood woodland, found a gate down to the bride away. Uh, join the road, up the road, over the river once again, up to um, another road junction. Then I found a bride away with a, a finger post in the hedge. Imagine that, an actual way marker for a, a public bride away. So following out was quite easy navigationally up to this point, but pretty steep as well. One section was quite overgrown, but it was fine for a human. And yeah, here we are, back on Offers Dyke Path, with only, I don't know, five miles to go. Let's follow the National Trail Acorns. I don't care how much this route undulates, it's nice knowing the way ahead is probably guaranteed. You can see where I've come from. The hill there with the tree on top is Slamvau, where I had my lunch. Came down this valley and up this way. I'm back on the dyke path already. I can just see the Cotswold Hills again, very faint in the distance, beyond all the towns and hills. There's that faint outline of what I reckon is Cleve Hill and Cleve Common. Just taking a brief detour from the past to see what this monument's all about. So it's dedicated to a man, Sir Richard Green Price who gave a lot of time and effort towards the construction of railway lines in the local area, I believe. That's a really vague way of putting it. There's no right of way through the field to my right, so we've got to walk down here and then turn left. 
some of the cars are fast moving but you can sort of see them coming and jump out of the way when you need to After this long weekend, I've got a real desire to do some more long distance walking this year. I want to try and do the Cleveland Way in September. I need to go back and revise my plans from last year because I was looking at walking 26 miles on the first day, which is going to be far too much. I know that now. And before that, I can try and spend more time on Dartmoor, make a better effort to spend even a weekend down there. I'm also thinking that I could get on and do the Cotswold Way in maybe two long weekends, so six days in total. It wouldn't be a bad thing, it would save me some annual leave. It's not too far from home, so I can certainly do the northern section, which I've not done before. As for today's walk, I'm not really that far from the end. Two more miles maybe, then my last night in the tent. I'm looking forward to going home in a sense, but not so much being home. There's a nice feeling that comes from knowing that trips sort of ending but the forecast tomorrow is not looking ideal like it was saying heavy rain first thing and then drizzle and showers the rest of the day my plan was that after packing away and having breakfast I drove about half an hour down to Kington and do a short seven mile loop around the Hargest Ridge Tomorrow's Monday, I've got to get home, unpack things, then I'm back to work on Tuesday. There's quite a lot to do, I know I won't do all of it, but there's some things that will need to be um, prioritised. I've seen a few of these old markers on this afternoon's walk for the Old Dyke Path. I normally see those around the Brecon Beacons and the Black Mountains area. It's the first time seeing him around here today. I would like to improve on my sleeping kit for the future. I've got a, an outfit cloud-based type mat to sleep on, which is inflatable. And I find that every time I use it, it kind of goes down and loses a bit of air overnight. Only like one breath at most, but you do feel it sometimes in the early hours. It's gone down and it's a bit crinkly. So I might look at buying the outkit Numo. Also my pillow situation. I've got the Nature Hike pillow, which is a clone of the See the Summit Eros, which is quite popular. Is it Eros or Deros? I'm not sure, but you can buy a pillowcase for that one. So I might just buy the pillowcase and see if I can fill it with like spare clothing, give me more of a softer feel because even though it blows up and it's you know it's compact and everything and lightweight, you're still lying on plastic at the end of the day, and being a side sleeper, it's not quite thick enough for me, my preferences. I'm still amazed I've seen so few, so few people today. I saw two guys having lunch shortly after I got, uh, made it back onto the dike path. There was a guy ahead of me earlier, but he's disappeared ahead. Not sure where he's gone. Even now I'm right beside a golf course on Sunday afternoon. It's a bit windy, but there's like, there's no one here, just sheep everywhere. Where is everyone in Wales? Anyway, hope you've enjoyed watching this video. I've very nearly finished now. Um, yeah, it's been a really good but rewarding and challenging walk. Hope I get to come back here one day and do the full office bike path. But in the meantime, thanks for watching, take care and I'll, I'll see you again soon.